Hello and uh, welcome back to our channel or welcome to our channel if you're new here and I'm Lee and with my wife Betty we are the the traveling expats and today I um, a follow-up to two of uh, two of my recent videos today I was going to talk about uh, something that uh, the sixth thing that I don't really like like about Germany or that really kind of bothers me about Germany makes me a little worried about it and uh, that is how over the last 30 years I've kind of observed um, Germany becoming more like the United States and I'll, I'll discuss that a little bit later but first what I wanted to do got a pretty loud crow out here it's a very windy day I hope you can hope you can hear me hope this uh, this content works but uh, the first thing I, I wanted to do before I get into that um, I wanted to address uh, some of the comments and some of the questions that we've received over the the past couple weeks so first of all uh, thank you very much for watching our videos and taking the time to comment and let us know what you think we, we appreciate that whether it's a positive comment or, or a negative comment you know we appreciate you uh, letting us know what you think about what we're doing all right so uh, the first thing is a um, question I've been asked a few times is where am I well um, that's a good question. So right now I am in the United States and specifically I'm in uh, the state of Washington in the Pacific Northwest part of the US. So Betty and I, we are, we're here visiting our, our children. They live here and behind our apartments, they have this nice forest and some trails. So it, it does remind me a little bit of Germany, the, the ability just to go out and, and walk a little bit, but the trail network is not nearly um, as robust uh, out of our house as it is uh, as it is in the house in Germany. So that's number one. I'm, I'm in in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about is uh, number one. You know, last week I released a video about five things that we don't like, or or five things that um, I guess kind of uh, annoy us or frustrate us about life in Germany. And um, you know, the the intent of that video was not to bash Germany or to make a big complaint session about Germany uh, but I wanted to kind of show the other side because uh, if you follow our channel and you know we make several videos about Germany traveling in video traveling in Germany uh, mostly um, you know our Germany content is overwhelmingly positive we talk about how much we like it there and uh, all the great things about living in Germany but I just wanted last week I wanted to give kind of the flip side you know it's like anywhere in the world, you know, Germany's not perfect, of course. So I just wanted to, to provide some of the things that bug us a little bit. So sorry if I offended anyone. And I get it. I kind of understand, you know, because as an American um, in the U.S., you know, I bash things. I complain about things in the United States all the time. And, you know, I know a lot of Germans complain about Germany, too, because I hear you talking uh, when I'm over there. But uh, so I, you know, I talk about things uh, that I don't like in the United States all the time you know, complain about it, whatever. But then when someone else from another country complains about the U.S., you know, I get a little defensive, right? So I get it. I understand how you feel that way. And again, so I apologize if I offended anyone. And those were not, you know, and ultimately those five things, you know, they weren't big issues uh, in the big scheme of things. They're minor inconveniences um, that are far outweighed by all of the great things and all the benefits of life in Germany. So uh, we still love Germany. We think it's a great place, but we just wanted to point out that, you know, we don't like everything. So that was the point of that and apologize if anyone was offended by that video. Okay, the first way that we feel like Germany is becoming more like the United States. Um, so when we first got to Germany in the 1990s, uh, you know, a long time ago, after we got adjusted and after we started appreciating how good things were, um, you know, one of the first things we noticed was just how orderly everything was. And we really appreciated that. And, you know, after we got used to things being closed on Sunday, and in fact, where we live, the village that we lived in, um, and even outside that area, most shops closed around 
I don't know, two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. So, um, you know, on the weekend when you had to get your shopping done, you got up early and you went and you took care of business. And then you had the rest of the weekend to kind of relax, you know, spend it with your family, you know, whatever you wanted to do. Um, but you weren't like doing a bunch of errands or things like that. You, you, you really got kind of um, kind of motivated to get up. Whereas, you know, the American way has been for a long time. You know, on Saturday, you kind of sleep in late and then you get in and then you kind of take all weekend, you know, doing the chores and the errands uh, that you have to do. And that just kind of strings out all weekend long instead of just getting it done bright and early on Saturday. So we really appreciated that, that, you know, that the shops were closed on, on um, Saturday and Sunday. And we really appreciated that, that way of life. Um, and that's still the case on Sunday, shops are closed, but we've noticed that, that on Saturday shops are open uh, uh, pretty much regular hours as far as I know. Some of them are open very late in the day. All right, so it was very orderly, it was very neat. And, um, you know, and along with that, also with the dining culture, you know, the United States has had a fast food, uh, I guess, to-go culture, you might say, for decades. I mean, I guess ever since, you know, probably the, um, the early to mid-1970s. Um, I remember being a young kid uh, in the 70s and uh, going through drive throughs to get stuff to go. So the U.S. has had that culture for a long time, but that wasn't the case in Germany. When we got there in the 90s, um, there were very few fast food places and um, uh, you know to go food was almost unheard of so if you're on a trip you know you're going somewhere and uh, you know you're driving along the Autobahn or whatever the case may be and you want to stop in um, you know uh, to get a cup of coffee or something you know back then you stopped you went inside you got a cup of coffee it was served to you in a real cup and you sat down for a little bit and you kind of enjoyed you know you know, enjoyed your time, maybe, you know, whatever it was, 15, 20 minutes, you know, 30 minutes, maybe you got something to eat and you sat down and actually had a meal because along the rest stops, along the Audubon, there were actually some pretty, you know, pretty nice restaurants, uh, pretty nice places to eat. Um, well, sadly, you know, that's, that's definitely changing. There are a lot more uh, fast food places, a lot, a lot of American fast food places uh, than there were back in those days. And, um, it's harder to find a place to kind of like go, a nice place to kind of go in and sit down and just kind of relax for a little bit as you're, as you're traveling. Um, so we almost never saw a McDonald's when we lived there in the 90s. You know, like I said, we lived in a small village in Bavaria and we had to drive quite a ways uh, before we would see our, our first McDonald's. So that just didn't exist. And you know, there were no to-go cups. And a matter of fact, a, a lot of, um, or very few to-go cups, I would say. And a lot of the cars, you know, the German cars back then didn't have cup holders, which was, you know, like unheard of to an American. So the to-go food culture, uh, the fast food culture, and, you know, and sometimes it seems like now, if I'm traveling, you know, I'm going somewhere, I'm on the highway and I'm driving along, um, it seems like it's easier to find, you know, a Big Mac or a Whopper or, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken or some sort of American fast food. It seems like it's easier to find that than it is to like just stop somewhere and have a Bratwurst or, or something. So, um, so that's really part of how, um, I think Germany's changed. It's really embraced the American fast food culture, which has, um, you know, several bad side effects. All right. So what are the, the drawbacks of this, uh, fast food, um, to go food, convenience food culture that I feel Germany is, um, is kind of taking over is taking from the United States. I, I think it's been a bad influence on Germany from, from the United States. So, you know, what are the drawbacks? Well, I think, you know, one of them is obvious and we all know this, but it's, uh, it's health of course. And, um, I think, you know, when I, you know, America, you know, we've had a, a problem with, uh, diet and exercise for a long time and, um, you know, it continues to get worse every year. It seems like, um, and, but when I got to, when we arrived in Germany, you know, in the, in the 90s, I was amazed at how fit everyone was. I mean, you hardly ever saw anyone, um, you know, who was overweight, even though, you know, I'll talk about smoking it, even though they smoked a lot, um, they still, they were very active 
and uh, yeah, they ate, uh, for the most part, you know, uh, good fresh foods, I guess. And you hardly ever saw anyone who looked overweight or who looked out of shape. They were very fit. And that really struck us. And I feel like, you know, even though Germany, I'd say on average, is still, uh, the population is still much healthier than the U.S. population for sure. I feel like that's becoming, I feel like the gap is probably narrowing a bit, maybe. But um, I don't know. So that's that's the first side effect of uh, of this fast fast food to go culture to go food culture. But the second thing is um, when you know I keep saying you know when we when we arrived there in the 90s and then when we would have guests to come visit us. One thing we noticed and one thing our guests always noticed was just how clean. The, the country of Germany was, uh, the countryside along the streets, even in the big cities, there was just, there was very little trash, um, you know, along the roadside, you hardly saw anything. Um, but, you know, a side effect to this to-go culture is you get your coffee cup to go, you get your food in bags, and, uh, you know, I guess, you know, a lot of all over the world, I guess when people do that, they, they throw it out the window or whatever. But, uh, you know, the, the trash along the highways in Germany is, uh, you know, it's not as clean as it used to be. And, uh, you know, that's a problem. Again, you know, that's a problem we've had in the United States for a long time. And I feel that uh, it's becoming more of a problem in Germany, too. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, I was just amazed at how pretty and how clean uh, the country was. And it's not quite... Um, at that same level today, I, again, you know, it's it's like all of these issues. I don't. It's not as bad as it is in the United States, but it is. I feel becoming a problem is that there's a lot more trash along the roadside now than there was 30 years ago in Germany, and I attribute a lot of that to uh, the growing uh, to-go and uh, fast food culture that uh, that's growing in Germany now. Okay, so the next topic that uh, I I feel. You know, again, this is all my feelings. I don't really have any data to support any of this, um, but this is just anecdotally uh, things that uh, I've observed uh, in Germany over the last 30 years. So the next thing I want to talk about is um, how Germany is adapting, adopting uh, the, the belief in America that everybody needs to, you know, work in a job, or work in an office or something like that, have a, have a what we call a white collar job. And, you know, America's had a problem for, for a long, long time in that uh, we've had this belief that, and we push it on our, our kids as they're going to school, that if you don't go to college and if you don't get a university degree, then uh, you can never be a success in life. And we've pushed that on kids for, for years and years and decades and decades. And that's kind of changing in the United States now. We're not, I think some people are realizing, hey, you can be a success. Uh, you can have a great life and you don't have to have a college degree for sure. So that the thought is changing a bit, but we've pushed that for a long time. And a lot of people still believe that. Now, in Germany, I don't, I don't think um, that people are, are, are pushing uh, university degrees or anything like that, but I do feel like, and based on people um, that I've talked to, I feel like that, um, that people today, you know, the younger people today, everyone wants um, a computer job, right? So everyone wants to work in an office, they want to be a computer programmer or, you know, something, something like that, something to do with computers. You know, less and less people want to like work with their hands and do craft work. And um, you know, you know, I keep going back to the original days. Like uh, when we first got got to Germany 30 or so years ago, that was one of the things that really impressed us and we really liked was the um, the uh, the trade, the way that Germany um, seemed to train to train people in different trades and the pride that people had in the jobs they had you know so if you were a uh, if you were a carpenter or a plumber or a um, you know whatever the case may be um, it seemed like people were really proud to have that as their occupation and it doesn't quite seem to be um, the case these days you know I know people um, um, you know I know um, you know Dachdecker, which Dachdecker, a roofer, um, Klempner, plumber, um, uh, people who work with uh, what uh, Fliesenleger, 
tile, tile man, a guy who lays, lays you know, tiles. Um, and again, please forgive me, my German pronunciation. But so I know people who, who run businesses like this, gardeners, I know a couple gardeners, uh, some uh, carpenters, and you know, they tell me, people who own the businesses, uh, they tell me that it's very difficult to find people who want to work in those jobs these days. And, and even if someone's been trained in, uh, in those occupations, that oftentimes they look for other things to do. Because, you know, and the old people, and, and I, you know, I think this is, you know, this is common across the world in the United States and Germany, probably any country you go to, the old people complain about the youth. So the older people, um, you, know, they, you know, they say the younger people don't want to work. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but that's what people tell me. You know, people who own these businesses, they say it's very difficult to find work in Germany. And that's been the case for this type of stuff in the United States for a very long time. Um, you know, we don't have enough electricians, we don't have enough plumbers, we don't have enough carpenters, we don't have enough people doing these manual jobs. And in Germany, many years ago, when we first got there, it seemed like people who did those jobs were very proud of their work and they really wanted to do a good job and they were proud of what they did. And now, uh, at least based on what I'm hearing, it seems like people, uh, more people just want to, you know, work with a computer. And I think that's the case, certainly the case in the United States, uh, has been for a long time. And I feel like that's probably uh, influencing Germany through probably uh, our media, you know, TV shows, movies, and things like that. That's just how I feel. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is, um, you know, pop, pop culture and how um, a lot of the, the music you hear in Germany and TV shows you see are um, overwhelmingly um, either from the United States or maybe sometimes from, from Great Britain as well, from the United Kingdom. Um, and, you know, I, I have to say, I'm not sure how long this has been going on because when I first, the first time I lived in Germany, um, we didn't really watch a lot of TV. So I'm not really sure what was on German TV back then. You know, we were newlyweds and uh, we went to work, we traveled and then we did things that newlyweds do. <laughs> that didn't uh, include uh, watching a lot of television, to be honest with you. But um, now, when I watch TV in Germany, I find a lot of it, or movies, a lot of it um, is, um, you know, American TV shows or American movies, but they're dubbed into German. Um, there's not a lot of original German content. Now, there is some, and some of it's quite good. You know, I watched the what is the the Netflix series uh, Dark, which was a German series, and I thought that was very entertaining. Um, the uh, TV show Babylon Berlin, maybe you know that one. I, that's very entertaining. And I watch these in German, by the way, and I don't use any English subtitles. Sometimes I watch them over and over again, but uh, pretty much I understand everything that's going on. And I, I find those to be very entertaining. But uh, the vast majority of um, of programs I, I find on the TV are I wouldn't. You know, a lot of them are uh, are from the United States, but they're um, dubbed in German, which is kind of weird for an American to watch. And uh, you know, the the music you hear on the radio is overwhelmingly English. Um, most radio stations, I would say that that I've listened to anyway, most of the radio stations that I've that I've heard are probably at least um, seventy five percent um, English pop songs, you know, so uh, sometimes it's difficult to hear a, uh, a German song on the radio, uh, but, you know, some of, you know, and I like German music, you know, Helena Fischer, who doesn't like her, you know, she's, she's pretty awesome. So thanks for coming along and listening to me talk this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it interesting and let us know in the comments what you think. Am I right about this or am I just, uh, you know, full of, uh, of, BS or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, so yeah, so let us know what you think and uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.